Hello, my name is Cesar, and today I would like to address a question I get a lot of times <laughs> about testing, uh, specifically about test-driven development uh, and how to do test-driven development for code relying heavily on DCC, uh, like Maya or Blender or whatever you use. Right? So um, it's usually around like I I, I used to be a rigger, uh, so. Yeah, so for example, an outer rig or something like that, that it's heavily based on some DCC library that only runs in that environment. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so first, as, uh, as a refresher, if you are completely new to Python testing, uh, I wrote this a few years ago. Uh, uh, some notes, it's like a high level overview. Uh, unit testing frameworks at the time I used nose I use unit test now just to keep things simple uh, because it's in the standard library basically but uh, yeah uh, what's a virtual environment uh, how do you do testing of something very simple what's coverage uh, and, and what about ECC code right so this try to solve that to answer to that question uh, you can do mock and you mock you can mock Maya so you can run those that code in Python standalone uh, so that's an alternative uh, I don't do that all the time I do that sometimes for some specific things uh, but it it's yeah so I, I usually if it's Maya uh, at work, we have like uh, this integration, continuous integration system. So when you send code for code review, there's this uh, services servers in the in yeah in the background running these tests in a headless uh, Maya session in Maya standalone. Uh, so yeah, it, you cannot have it for free. It is runs usually through Jenkins or Travis or some service similar similar service, but uh, you can you can totally start my standalone if you are like a freelance or doing something small scale, or you can even run your test in in the script editor. It doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, there there are better and worse ways to do it, but if that's the problem. That's another problem. Even even if you don't have a fully automated system in place yet, uh, if you have the test, you you will you will figure out that. Uh, so this and 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 it's the thing about TDD for me. It's not that much about the test themselves, which is important, but it's about it helped me to discover uh, the system and trying to. To develop right to solve a problem it's like a, a way a tool for me to to get there so, okay so before going and do some code or you know this is not just me talking all the time uh, we need to step back a little bit and and talk about testing because testing is a big subject and there are many types of tests uh, there are many 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 there are way too much way too many but uh, the, the main ones for that are relevant right now would be like unit testing, which is testing the unit. Uh, so you test each uh, method, each function in isolation, kind of, each module in isolation. So you make sure that each piece, each unit work. Uh, then you basically you have integration tests when you put all the pieces together and you make sure they integrate properly, they work together, right? Sometimes you have pieces in modules or units working properly, but when you put those together, you're not really solving the problem, right? So you have to adapt it a little bit. And then uh, there's the acceptance test. And I think that's what you're thinking, or most people thinking when they think about testing stuff in Maya. Uh, acceptance test, uh, they're very common, uh, they're very typical on, on rigging actually. And, and it's usually done at the end, at the end to like validate a rig. It's like a quality 
uh, a QA, quality assurance. Uh, so you, you make sure that uh, the result in Maya uh, comply with the standard of your production, right? So I don't know, the visibility switches, uh, attributes are not givable, uh, whatever it is, it, it, it doesn't matter. But you have some spec for your production or your pipeline and and you cannot do those tests at the end. So going back to test driven development or TDD, I don't do that kind of test for TDD. Because at the beginning I don't really know what what the rigging is, what the rig is, right? I, I don't I, everything is in the air. So start by that kind of test don't help me much uh, at least in my experience. What helped me is more about unit tests and about integration tests. So that helped me to kind of put the system together. And then, sure, I would do acceptance test uh, to make sure I, I got the right result in Maya at the end. Uh, but I'm kind of assuming that Maya functions and commands and whatnot uh, work. So I don't have to test that those work. Sure, there will be bugs. Sure, you can say whatever you want about you know the quality of the software. I'm I'm not going in in, in that discussion right now, but it it's like that's not your job, right? Your job is make sure that your code it works and and works properly. So okay, uh, so what what I wanted to do is to. Can I do a, a really simple toy example of a rigging system? Uh, can I live and, and, and try to share what's on my head so you can uh, get my take? Uh, this is not by any means, like I'm not an expert in this stuff. Uh, I've been doing it for a while, but, but you know, I'm, I'm totally sure that I will watch this video in a few years. I will be like, oh my God. <laughs> But you know, this is this is this is what it is for me right now. So I wanted to share that, and hopefully it's useful. So let me open a, a terminal, and I have this uh, folder here, which uh, which is empty. I have a virtual environment, and that's because my Python by default is Python three and it doesn't matter. It yeah, it doesn't matter really. So it will create two files as always, and a test rig py. Super simple. Open my editor and and open both the files one side by side. So this is test rig. You can see the name there, and this is rig. You can see the name there. And I will do what I. Always do so. I will import uh, unit test. I will import rig. I will create a class and I will call this rig test case or whatever. This is unit test dot test case. So that's the one. And that's it. I don't care about this. Uh, this will be test underscore whatever asset yeah whatever it really doesn't matter uh, this will be pass for now and then I would do if main uh, unit test dot main oops oh, damn it. okay so what this does is if I run this I basically I'm running one test which is this pass so I can start like filling that up so this is my clear cam my clean canvas and here you can I I start like make making stuff up you know like I don't know okay I want to create a rig so I would say asset would be equal to rig which is the module right dot uh, animation rig no, no, because we have rig and rig two times. Uh, uh, new asset name uh, test right. 
uh, yeah, so I create a new asset, a bricked asset, I guess. So then uh, I, I totally want to do components. So my rig would be composed by multiple small rigs. That's a very common approach. So in the question was like, how could they do like an IKFK uh, limp? Right, so let's do that. So let's say I want to add a component uh, from a library. And this will have like an ID, a name or something. So IKFK limp. And then we'll have a name. So let's say arm. And then we will probably have a side. So left and right side, right? So let me, oops, do that. Right side, and maybe I can copy this and do like, like a uh, leg or whatever. So now we have uh, two arms and two legs, so both use the same components. Uh, so, so that's kind of nice. And then I probably want to build this in Maya uh, or whatever. So I don't know, that kind of makes sense. This is nothing, it's nothing to do with the kind of stuff we do at work, just saying. <laughs> So this is not this is not like the best approach by any means. It's just a toy example, right? Of a very simple interface. So okay, that seems reasonable. So if I run this, nothing work, of course. So let's make it work. So def new, and we pass what we pass, uh, like an an asset name. And this will create like a animation rig, we say so. Uh, return animation rig and we pass asset name so that looks like we need that class somewhere so let's say class uh, animation rig uh, object which is fine I don't care this have a name okay nice cool so we have the animation, uh, this this probably underscore name. And we use getters, but you know, whatever, it, it's not important. Cool, so we can create a new animation. Uh, if we run this, add component from library. Okay, so this will need add component from library. And it has like a component ID. It has like a name and a side. And the side maybe could be middle by default. Or maybe not. I don't know. So looks like we need like a component library. So let's do that. Uh, so we'll say component library. And for now, just to make it super simple, it will be a dictionary. This will probably not hold for too long. But, you know, uh, so this will have, this will have, uh, will hold like a uh, ID and like a class maybe. Okay. Like the class of the component, right? The class defining the component. So there might be like a discovery mechanism or something. Okay. So we are basically going to component library dot get and we pass the component ID and that gives us a class. And then if uh, the class is not known, which means it's registered. Uh, we can do like uh, we need to add this component right so self dot underscore components and this uh, we probably want to index by name or side because we usually we want to get those so I will say this is a dictionary but then the order is kind of important for the build where right? sometimes you want to build something before another so we're going to use our order 
or the date. So that's in the collections model module or the date. Cool. So I need to import that import collections. Nice. So if this is not known, I want to go to self dot underscore collections and I want to pass a key and that would be equal to the component. So what's key? Key would be equal to a name underscore size, maybe. Cool. And the component would be equal to an instance of this class, which is name name side right so that's nice and then I can return the component nice and I missed self here that makes sense uh, so if I run this or the uh, I I mess up Order, there we go. Oh. Uh, animation rig object has no attribute build. Okay, so let's do build. Dev build, and this in itself. Uh, so I guess we are going for each in self dot underscore components. Uh, that values because it's a dictionary, right? And we can each dot build. So we basically build each component. Right, so we need to define a component, right? So a component uh, object, that's right, that's okay. It has a, a name, it has size, uh, which it, it was equal to middle times up. Yeah, so okay, self underscore name, it's equal to name. Self dot underscore side, it's equal to side. Nice. And this might need a build. And this needs to be implemented per component, so that's great. And this is passing, but we don't have an IKFK limb. So let's um, let's do that. So we probably need like an ID. Let me create like a class method. Uh, ID ID is not a great name because it's a Keyword, but uh, stop name. Okay, so it's the name of the class. Uh, so basically, we, we need um, uh, another class called ikfk limp, and this inherit from component, and this is fine, I don't care. And then we need to register this. So let's do component uh, library. Uh, and we do ikfk limp dot id. And this is equal to ikfk limp. Yes. So this probably need to be like automatic, looking at some kind of thing. So what was the problem? Line 16. Oh. 
collections <laughs> components cool so now that I have that a uh, little kind of structure there I can test stuff so I can say for example uh, okay I can say like uh, self dot uh, assert uh, equal Uh, so I said that the length of uh, asset dot components it's equal to four, right? I can say assert uh, true, and I can do like as uh, dot uh, is built or something like that. You know, I can do like. Um, uh, asset dot uh, I don't know uh, anim controls I want all the anim animation controls it will be equal to an empty list in this case but because there's the component is not being implemented yet but all these kind of things uh, drive the development right that's the point so if I want that to run uh, okay components I need to do components so F a components self and I return uh, self dot underscore comp oh. self dot self dot underscore components uh, dot values yes uh, so that should pass the first one yes so now it's built. Okay, def uh, is built. So this will return uh, o x for x in component in self dot components. You see how I can start using the methods that I just implemented. self dot component there so that's gonna help me right so this could be now nice it, it, it gets nicer so if all of those are true this would be true so obviously in order for that to work I need something here like uh, is built and at the beginning it will be false but when you build the thing, uh, self dot is built, this will be true, right? And then uh, def uh, is built, this will be return self dot is built. So if I run this, we're good. The, the missing piece is the animation controls. Okay, let's do animation controls. Uh, def anim controls self. Uh, so what I want to do here is anim controls will be equals to x dot anim controls for like that for x in self dot components. Nice. Uh, so that would be like a list of lists. So I will use. Okay, I'll need to import iter tools. So here I can do like return, uh, cast this to a list and say iter tools. That one dot uh, chain, and I pass. Uh, anim controls so if I run this uh, there is no the component hasn't implemented that yet so of course I need anim controls self and this will return a list for now 
and it's passing. So see that that's that's the entire point. This these tests are very simple. There's no Maya code here, but now when I have to implement this IKFK limp, I know exactly what to do. I know that I need to implement a build uh, method that will build the thing in Maya. I need that I need to somehow register the animation controls uh, so I can return them. Uh, the same with the skeleton guides, whatnot, right? But it can inform how the system will work. And then when it comes to implement these things in Maya, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. And so the test for that would be basically run the thing, make sure that it works, and write like an acceptance test, saying, you know, testing that the end result is what we expect. But that's about it. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's, yeah, that, that's my approach anyway, so I hope it's useful for someone out there, and well, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Uh,